They, uh, a pleasure to meet you. And I got to be honest with you, when I saw Alt 5, I, Sigma Corp, I didn't actually know the name or recognize it. And then I saw a little bit of the backstory, which was Jan 1. Tell me what happened with the name change. Yeah, so so Jan 1, it was a 30-year-old company listed on NASDAQ, primarily had in the healthcare space. <laughs> they had met and identified All5 Sigma, which is a private Canadian company involved in the crypto uh, payment space. Um, they came to a deal. And on May 16th, the transaction was closed where Jan 1 acquired the private company All5 Sigma. Since then, we've tried to streamline the story so that you know, you're looking for All5 Sigma, you don't go onto a, a health tech biotech website. Uh, so we, we really had to clarify that. So since then, Jan 1 has changed its name to All5 Sigma. And the ticker moved from Jan, J-A-N, to Alt-S. So, you know, just trying to trying to streamline the messaging out to the markets. And since then, obviously, um, it's publicly disclosed, but we've, we've hired an agent to uh, look at strategic alternatives for those healthcare assets. Okay, but you've retained the NASDAQ listing and the uh, Russell Micro uh, um, uh, Corp? Um, Absolutely. We're a NASDAQ listed company, yes. Okay, cool. Now, tell me about the new business that you're doing then. Uh, what is All5 Sigma? Yeah, so it's a, it's a success story that took six years in the making here. Uh, the, the first two years, so we're not a startup. I want to be very clear. Uh, we're not a startup and we're a B2B focused company. We're not servicing individuals. So uh, the first two years, Basically, development of the platform, testing, getting the regulatory approvals. We're FinTrack, FinCEN registered. Uh, we have the money sender licenses. We set up KYC AML. So we're very compliant, as you need to be to operate in the crypto space. Um, first year, we turned it on, which would have been year three. We processed 39 million US dollars of transaction volume. Now, that is volume that, that, that we do that converts crypto to fiat or vice versa. <coughs> That's our business. We're a pipe. In the background, we work for merchants. You may not even know you're using L5 Sigma's rails, but we're there, we're there in the background. We're an infrastructure company. Um, that's the way we like it. <laughs> we service large companies and online merchants. So um, last year, we uh, the last four years, we've tr experienced tremendous growth. Last year, we did $1.14 billion uh, US dollars in transaction volume. This year, uh, first half of this year, 2024, we've already done 879 million US uh, transaction volumes. Q4 is typically our strongest quarter. So I really believe we're going to vastly exceed what we did last year. We're already there. So um, as I mentioned, what we do is we go to merchants. Let's say you have a camera shop that you sell online and you want to be able to your users to pay in crypto for these cameras. <laughs> we literally integrate within a week and a half We'll get you up and running and your users can transact with Bitcoin, Ether, Tether, whatever it is from their wallets. And we will transact for you and deliver you whatever you want. You can keep it in native crypto as a merchant or you can take it in US dollars, euros, Canadian dollars, whatever you need. So that's what we do. We're that pipe and we charge typically one to five percent on that transaction. So, okay, so then you're not direct to consumer, you're uh, B2B, as you indicated, but I'm impressed by the numbers. Just in July, $179 million US, and that's more than double what you did a year ago. How are you growing so fast? It's really a pull market right now, Pat. Um, you know, we have not done formal marketing. You don't see billboards about all five Sigma out there. We're not advertising at you know uh, the maple leafs games or anything like that we're we've actually been very quiet we haven't been out to the conferences or anything it's been word of mouth it's been satisfied happy customers that love what we've done referencing passing references off to their friends and we respond to those references just uh, you know just uh, an astounding stat we've had one salesperson create all of this growth and <laughs> you know that that one individual has just been running flat out, getting us to, to over a billion uh, transactions year to date. So I, I think just being able to come in and, and maybe try to beef up that sales team, look at some uh, targeted approach to doing uh, doing sales, will just could really juice those, those, uh, those volume numbers. Um, and just to give you some context, Pat, we service just under 500 merchants right now. That's a tiny number. If we wow. could, we could, 
you know, add a couple of sales guys, we could get, if we got to a thousand merchants, we could double the business, get to 4 billion in transactions. So um, really happy. I need to mention that typical rule of thumb is 1% of our transaction volumes translates into net revenue for us. And right. I have to tell you, we are cash flow positive. Um, you know, we typically target just under 30% EBITDA margin. So um, hyper growth and profitability. So I, I think those, those are a killer combination. Uh, is there much competition in that kind of a space, given the size of uh, you know, what blockchain is doing right now? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. What's really interesting is the traditional payment processors, the big guys, <coughs> credit card guys, right? Like those, the guys that process for Visa or whatever, extremely conservative uh, industry. And, and frankly, they don't want to step into crypto because it shines a regulatory spotlight on their ex the whole company and the, on their business. They're there to protect their existing traditional business. That is a cash cow. They make money sleeping, to be perfectly honest. So the fact that, you know, do they want to step into the crypto domain where all of a sudden the SEC is looking very closely at that part of the business, which could affect, you know, could affect negatively their entire business. Um, it's not a risk a lot of them are willing to take. They may partner or, or f make investments in the space, but it's very they're very careful about that. So that's the traditional side. <clears throat> Certainly, there are a lot of startups that are looking to to do what we do and 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 be in the space. I think that the key is: Do you have the technology? Do you have the automation internally to make these transact to, to be to to provide secure, scalable transactions for your clients? Um, and it's about getting volume. Like we, we, we've demonstrated that we were able to capture these merchants and they're happy because they're referring their friends and their, and, uh, and business associates. So um, it's a bit of a land grab right now. I should tell you that the payment space last year was 3 trillion us. That's ex China too. And less than 2% of that were crypto payments. So we're, we're, we're early, early days, Pat, only 2%. <laughs> and we've been able to do this type of volume. So, if that goes two to three to four percent of payments. That's a big number, even though it's tiny in the grand scheme of things. I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, ask you what are your thoughts now on the growth of uh, you know blockchain technology and Bitcoin and, and digital currencies in particular. Do you see them taking over? Uh, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty years from now. I absolutely do because I, I think you know they're the younger generation. They're growing up with this now. They're very comfortable with it. I think, I think, and and they're they're going to grow up to be our, our business leaders, our our CEOs, and incorporating that into their business plans. We see it more and more. I think it's there's going to be a, a, a potentially big catalyst with the U.S. elections coming up. That uh, you know, Trump has already said he wants the USA to be the center of crypto. They want they want to be the focus. They want to embrace it. Um, I'm a big believer because I'm a technologist at heart. I'm an electrical engineer by training. So I, I, I understand, I, I see the value of what, what blockchain is all about. It's just about finding the right applications, but also the magic of what we do, Pat, essentially is dumbing it down. Make it simple. Make it simple like you're paying with a credit card, but you're actually using crypto. It's complex behind the scenes. We do a lot of interesting uh, there's a lot of technology behind the scenes, a lot of hard work that goes behind the scenes. But for you, it's got to be simple. And that's what's going to drive adoption. And that's when my grandmother and your cousins and your nephews are all going to be able to transact without even thinking about it. Vey sounds like a uh, tremendous opportunity. Thanks for telling us about it. Thank you, Pat.